I devoted the first half of my career, you know, a lot of my grad school time as well as my time in the military to developing wireless sensors and RFID. So at that time, which was you know, roughly 20 years ago, um, we were looking to create some of the, 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 the early visions for the Internet of Things. So we were thinking about ubiquitous computing and, and one of the fundamental tenets of that vision was, was saying that every object in our environment has to have an ID. So we started working with companies such as Procter & Gamble, and in fact I worked with Kevin Ashton who coined the term Internet of Things, and I came out of Neil Gershenfeld's group at the, the Media Lab, and together we were forming this vision, and uh, because I worked for many years in the Air Force Materials Lab and we're looking at smart materials, we started looking at finding ways that we can create ID inside the materials themselves. So basically, rather than using a chip, um, every material has its own electromagnetic signature and can you use that signature to identify the things in your environment. So um, over the years, you know, at, initially we didn't really know how to make very tiny chips. We, we didn't have machines that can handle these tiny chips that are you know, tens of microns on a side. But over the years we learned how to do that and we, and we eventually made sort of 10 cent ID tags. So uh, one of the areas that I started um, applying my research towards is making sensors. So in addition to ID, uh, we then started looking at how to apply material structures to do sensing in the environment. So you not only want the, all the devices in your environment to have an ID and be able to talk to them, but you also want them to sense what's going on, which could be things as simple as you know, light, temperature, vibration, and so forth. So I've created a whole uh, variety of sensors that can be made from materials at a very low cost, you know, like pennies or even less. And that became you know, another wave of our work in RFID. And in fact, that spawned a startup company that I did later called TagSense. And, uh, and some spin-offs um, such as FreshTemp, which was actually, uh, FreshTemp is a company that was just recently acquired uh, a couple weeks ago, in fact. And over the years, we started seeing uh, Internet of Things uh, move on, so ID, sensing, and the next thing was communication protocol. So you can imagine if you have you know, hundreds or, or thousands of these objects in your environment, you need to talk to them. So how do you address each individual one uniquely? And how do they talk to each other without stepping on each other's communications? So we had to create all these different protocols. And, and the last thing we needed to, needed to figure out a way to power all these devices. So that spawned a whole new branches of research in energy harvesting. You know, can you use the vibration, the heat, the light in your environment to, to power these things and create maybe like micro batteries or energy harvesting circuits. So all of that, uh, the good news is that all of these wonderful technologies have now reached a, a certain level of maturity and a lot of it is starting to become commercialized. And now is really the exciting time because the visions that we had 20 years ago from the Internet of Things is now becoming reality. And now we're starting to look at what do we do with these technologies? What do we do with the Internet of Things? And what my group does today is looking at how we can apply all these wonderful mobile and wireless technologies in ways to really have social impact and apply them to solve real fundamental social problems that we have on this planet today.